Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cav Coliseum, episode three. Uh, in the last episode, we um, we had a very harsh awakening as to how hard this game was. We'll do a quick team recap. It's been a few days, so um, we have Espion, our main hitter, sitting at level 27. Same move set as always. Uh, Nothing really changed all that much. We also have Umbreon here, sitting at level 28, our defensive wall, really. Uh, very good defense, very good special defense. And we also picked up Kualava. Kualava, we, uh, his door to his heart is still closed, unfortunately, so we're still working on him. He only has Shadow Rush as a move right now. And uh, we have two options today. We can go to Pyrite Town and continue the story, or we can work with Quilava to open the door to his heart a little bit more. So there's two ways we can do that here. We have the rest of the pre-gym. We did the first battle of it. Or we can, um, I think the Coliseum is open up here, the Fennec Stadium. So we're going to check out Fennec Stadium first and see if that's available. I want to get some more moves on Quilava, train him up a little bit more. And I decided if I'm doing Coliseum battles, um, because it's not the overworld, we're not going to treat it as like as part of the Nuzlocke rules. I know it's kind of copping out on some stuff, but like theoretically in this world, if I'm doing a Coliseum battle, they obviously know it's a fight for fun. It's like UFC fighting. People in UFC fighting don't, you know, fight to the death really. It's 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 a simulated fight or not simulated fight. It's it's a fight, yeah, but it's not like we're they're going to die. So I'm treating the stadium and Coliseum battles like that. All other battles, however, will be uh, Nuzlocked, basically. So let's see. Oh, never mind, we cannot enter the challenge yet. Alright then, let's get going. So, continue on down here. Let's see. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to take on a couple more challengers <clears throat> here. And I'm actually going to start out with uh, Quilava. He's level 30, so he is um, he is a little bit of a powerhouse there. But remember, he only has one move, and we saw what happened to our Makuhita that was level 40 or that was level 30. And how he got. Uh, actually, I'm not going to spoil that as to why the Makuhita is not in the party right now. But uh, we can get into that later. So let's begin the battles. Oh wait, no, I have to talk to Justy again. Whoop. A little bit of a skip in the emulation there. That was weird. Alright, one thing I need to do is... I'm going to talk to this lady here. She's going to update our PDA. The strategy memo. This one's awesome. So you get to check the types. It's basically the Pokedex. You get to check the types and abilities of the Pokemon you've met at a glance. So, every Pokemon, including Shadow Pokemon, will be listed in here. <sighs> However, you have to meet the Pokemon first. So, our Shadow Pokemon, that's a oh, first time, first meet thing, you have to deal with in that regard. So, let's talk to Justy here. <sighs> Ooh, sorry guys, got a little bit of the sniffles today. Let's go deal with this trainer next. I think she's a water type trainer, so I, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna do some what's called switch training here. Basically, um, we're gonna call out Quilava at the start here, and then we're gonna immediately switch Quilava out for Umbreon to save face and make sure Quilava does not get absolutely mollywopped by this Meryl here. So, we have a Meryl and a Surskit on the field. Uh, Meryl is. It's either nor no, it's pure water type. Surskit is bug water, so very very good typings there from both of them. Uh, both of them are very lethal to Quilava, so we're gonna get Quilava out of there as quickly as possible. I probably said Quilava about six times in the past seven seconds or so. So switch out Quilava, and I want to deal with the I want to deal with the Meryl first. Just because Meryl's a little bit more tankier than Surskit. Surskit we can whittle away at with uh, Umbreon. Should be easy. Well, bam Half health Meryl right there. Now, the game's going to tell us more and more about opening the door to the Shadow Pokemon. 
Uh, I'm going to tell us basically the, the main way you do it is by battling. Battle Pokemon, switch them in and out, uh, use their moves, and we're going to learn about a, a mode called Hyper Mode that Shadow Pokemon enter that's kind of their big drawback. Uh, basically, it's, it's kind of like uh, they, they won't listen to their trainer at all if they're in Hyper Mode, so we'll have to worry about that. But calling them back from Hyper Mode significantly reduces their... Um, it significantly reduces the gauge to their heart, their heart gauge, basically. So it'll make a, it'll make the process a lot faster. So uh, as much as you don't want them to enter hyper mode, um, if you feel confident in your battling skills, it's not too big of an issue. They'll be able to handle themselves just fine. Ooh, nice paralysis. I like it. Alright, let's keep going here. Alright. There we go. I think that's clear. I don't think she has any more bonds. Yep, we're good. Alright, and last but not least, oh, we'll have a fire type trainer, and then I think it's a rock ground. I think that's what the last trainer is. I have the strategy guide right next to me if we really want to. I usually put it off because I want to see what I can remember from memory, and then surprise myself and adapt to the outcomes instead of planning for everything, because that's kind of how most first playthroughs go, and that's really what kind of determines your skill at Pokemon, is being able to adapt on the fly like that. All right, so rich boy do go. So he's gonna send out a trap inch and a swineb. Oh, look at the little swineb. All right, so swineb is ice ground. Ice ground? Yeah, ice ground. Something like that. So we're going to keep in cool off. Now, ground is super effective to fire, so that is um, that is uh, a challenge there. So we want to make sure we get rid of these guys. Ricky Tick here. I don't think they're going to have too many ultra effective moves on us, but we'll see. Yes, there it is. So that's called hyper mode. Hyper mode uh, basically skips your turn. The Pokemon activates hyper mode and he kind of does what he wants. So um, we're going to get him out of hyper mode here by calling him. So most Pokemon games, if you're facing wild Pokemon, you get an option to run from that wild Pokemon. However, in trainer battles, you can't run from trainer battles, so they replace that option with this call option. Now, you see Kulava's border on his name kind of changed and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit call, and you can see how drastically that heart gauge is going to lower. Uh, I want to knock out this trap inch still. <laughs> and trap inch down. Good, good. Uh oh. I do have smoke screen now, which is good. Um, he's using Dig, so I'm actually going to pull Kowalava out of there in case that Dig's targeting him. And now we just got to wait for the Swine Up to uh, come back up from the ground, because he's currently invulnerable. Because obviously he's in the ground, so we can't really attack him. <laughs> Unless we have a move called Earthquake or Bulldoze, but I don't think Bulldoze is in this generation. Yeah, so they were targeting the Kowalava. Luckily I pulled him out of there, otherwise that would have been a little bit nasty. We'll just breeze through the moves, bite, confusion. Umbreon's an interesting choice. Um, given his level and everything, he's missed a lot of good moves. I think, let me check the decks for this on the guide. I've had this guidebook for, I want to say, 15 years, something like that. So his next good move that he'll get is Faint Attack at level 36. And he doesn't get any other attacking moves 
aside from TMs from there. So Umbreon is literally just going to bite and feign attack. That's his only two main moves he gets. He could use Secret Power, but Secret Power, of course, um, what Secret Power does is it uses the terrain around you to base what the move is, kind of, and what the status effects and all that can be. So it's a little bit uh, iffy on that. But we can deal with it. Espeon, however, gets some really nice moves. Um, Espeon will get Psybeam as it levels up, as well as Psychic. Psychic being really, really powerful. Uh, it'll also get Psych Up and Swift. So some really nice moves there that uh, Espeon will get. Now notice, uh, most of our Pokemon will gain levels or they'll gain experience and then level up with that experience like in typical RPGs. However, our shadow Pokemon aren't. We have to wait for our shadow Pokemon to purify. We go through a process called purifying. Uh, once they purify, they'll gain a lot of allotted XP. So they're still gaining XP, they just can't utilize that XP. That's kind of a better way to think about it. So they'll gain their allotted SP or XP um, when they purify as well as that's when they'll be able to evolve and then that's when we can nickname them and whatnot too so lots of fun stuff we can do there all right so i was wrong it's um grass okay so it's grass uh water ground rock very interesting choices here so um geodude is rock ground as is rhyhorn no i think rhyhorn's pure ground no, Reinhorn's Rock Ground as well. So we want to get Kulov out of here. He has what's called the Quad Effective Weakness against these two. I don't want him in to deal with any of that. I'm also going to put up a Reflect because both of these guys are physical attackers. That'll give Espeon a little more durability. As well as it'll really buff up Umbreon here. So that'll help us out. And I guarantee you they're both going to hit Umbreon this turn because they both have super effective moves on what was Kulava. So luckily we did switch out there, that was good. Umbreon's speed is going to drop, it doesn't really matter all that much. And we want to get rid of this Geodude, because he's just going to defense curl all day and just be a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, again, but then again I do have special attacking moves in Bite and Psychic, so I don't, or in Bite and Confusion, so I don't have to worry too much. Um, I'm going to deal with the Rhyhorn first actually. I know I said I was going to deal with Geodude, but... Geodude can just defense curl. He's not going to do any raw damage to me, but this Rhyhorn can, and I want to make sure he doesn't get an opportunity to. There we go. Sorry about that. I had to clear the nostrils a little bit. So Geodude defense curling up. It's not going to matter. Again, we have, we have special attacking moves. He's raising his physical defense, so we don't have to worry too much about it. And this should deal with him easily. We're going to see a lot of Umbreon and Espeon today while we do all this. Um, probably next episode and when we get into Pyrite Town. And when we get into Pyrite Town, we'll be capturing some more Pokemon, as well as one of our first named, po what will be named Pokemon, when we get him. Yeah, mostly just rolling with what we got right now. Uh, it's a little bit slow. We would have had four members on the team, but uh, certain events transpired. <laughs> there we go. Alright, cool. That's all the trainers down. And here comes Justy himself. That was inspiring. It deserves a gift. Alright, he's going to give us a white herb, which basically is a full heal. And he says, uh, come back when we have a full party. We're not going to do that. We're going to come back when we have a full purified party, because he's actually very, very high leveled. So we're going to come back and deal with him. But let's check out the elevator here, explore ties a little bit, see what we got. And we got this little resting area here for all the trainers. We'll talk to them all, see what they got. So here's Duggo. He's got the ground types. Here's the rock type trainer with an Auron, which we didn't even see. Auron's a steel rock. He's pretty cool typing. 
Liqui with her magic carp <laughs> just flailing on the side of the <laughs> on the side of the pond there. And then Botan with her Oddish. So yeah, just a nice little cool area all the trainers kinda hang out in. I didn't speak to this guy, what does he got? A variety of terrain, yep, okay, cool. Yeah, not much there, just a nice cool little area where you can see all the trainers that you just fought. We'll go back up here, and I think that means we're ready for Pyrite Town, as much as I don't want to admit it. Ooh, I would like another move on Quilava, but we'll have to deal with it. So let's get going. Uh, I'm going to heal up, we're going to stock up as well before we move out. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit longer. I figured 30 minutes isn't really that, 30, 35 minutes isn't really that long, so I'm going to extend them out to an hour and we'll see how they go from, we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, just because I want to make sure we get uh, everything that we can done, that we need to get done. Without it being like, okay, here's two battles and we're done. Because <laughs> that was the trend the past couple of videos, so we're going to try to work that out. I'm going to save real quick. There we go, and let's keep going. Checking items. Got nine super potions, five potions, a full heal, three full heals, two paralyzed heals, and that white herb. So I think I'm gonna get more full heals. I think we're good on potions. We we'll get some full heals just to deal with any other status ailments we come across. Of course, like I said, we could just go like in the uh, freaking what you want to call it and deal with it, but. I'd much rather just uh, spend my money now. Uh, Pokeballs, that's a good option. Usually, in this game, I don't worry too much. So we got four Pokeballs, six Great Balls. Uh, I think we'll be alright for the start of Pyrite Town with that amount. Plus, we're about to get Coliseums unlocked, too, which is going to be really fun. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I need to do. I've talked to everybody in town. Alright, I guess we're going out to Pyrite Town. And boom, right next door is... Oh, no, it's the construction lot we have to go to. You can see they're working on a big old tower there. This is a construction site, not a safe place to be. Talk to these hooligans, see what they got. They're just about done, eh? Interesting. There'll be a Colosseum on top of it. Okay. Alright. Cool. So, visit the construction yard, and now we have access to Pirate Town all the way here on the west bank, southwest side. Coolest theme ever in any Pokemon game. Oh, this man. Mr. Kale arguing with the police. Go let this guy off easy today. Look at this punk. He's he's nothing but a punk. Doesn't have a thing to tell you. So let's talk to some of the residents. I'm gonna leave him for a second. Oh, he thinks we're one of Mirabee's uh, new peons. Who's this guy? The town of Earth, Wind, and Money. Just, just listen to that theme. Just. I might incorporate this theme into some videos sometime. That's a great theme. Alright, Gail wants nothing to do with this. Let's check out this chick. What's she got? Fortune telling? Interesting. Fatine is the mother of Pyrite. Her ability as a fortune teller is highly regarded. Mm-hmm. Okay.
Alright, cool. So that's Fatine. She does fortune telling. Uh, we also have this little area here. I think this is the police station. Yes, it is. Look at this hooligan. Talk that thugs have been witnessed using strange Pokemon. <clears throat> the story's not new. Of course it is. Let's talk to the chief. Chief Sherls, huh? Obviously we're travelers. This this is my boy Garish. Garish is uh, a very, very interesting individual. Uh, I missed what he said after that. Get out of town as soon as possible. <laughs> Descended into a state of lawless chaos, huh? Well, I think we can handle our own here. Let's see, who's this? Eh, nobody. Oh, is that who I think it is? <laughs> hey, it's Folly and Trudley. Oh, man. Don't tell me or me that we're <laughs> hiding out here. <laughs> oh, man. So they were so afraid to go back to the boss's failures that they, they turned themselves in. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, just trying to think. There's nothing over there. All right. Let's keep going. What do we got in here? What's this building? One of these areas is the shop. I just can't remember. <laughs> Are you trying to sell me something? Wow. Muscle-bound roughnecks about. It's not a surprise that it's had a history as a rough town. When Duking was in charge, there wasn't any of this lawlessness. Okay. What's come over Duking? Who's this Duking we're talking about? Here, Obviously, the shop is where it says shop over it. Oh, okay. Ten potions for ten dollars. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, they got hyper potions over here. So hyper potions are like the end all be all of potions, aside from full restores. Uh, what hyper potions do is most of your mods will only have about just just over two hundred HP, and you'll tend to use it before. Um, you'll tend to use it to restore all of their HP versus just some of it. So hyper potions are nice to have. Uh, it's too a little bit too early in the game to be carrying them. I, I should make it all right with just uh, super potions. Revives will revive a will obviously revive a fainted Pokemon with half its health points. We won't be needing those obviously with the Iron Man run we're doing. Interesting though. Oh, there's their full heals. Okay. I think their full heals are more expensive here than they were in Fennec. I, I mean, that would make sense considering the lawlessness of town prices would skyrocket. Let's see. What else we got here? Who's this hooligan? My outfit's weird. Boy. We have street battles rather than exchanging greetings. Oh, okay. Just right on into it. All right. Chaser Calda would like to battle. He's got a Sentret and a Talo. Alright, let's go knock these fools out real quick. So Quilla was going to get a chance to actually shine here without being switched out, which is nice. <clears throat> and Espeon, of course, going to do the work. Um, I think we're going to bust up that Talo first, just because the Sentret I'm not too worried about. Um, it's got normal type moves, so Talo is a normal flying type, the first flying types we've seen so far, and it's gone. Okay, never mind. <laughs> It's just gone. <laughs> He's got a slack off as well. So as I was saying, Taylor's a normal flying type. Uh, flying has the kind of the same super effectiveness abilities that fire has, and it is really uh, is super effective against uh, grass, bug. Actually, I think that's it. Grass and bug, yeah. So it's very very useful against both those two. Obviously, it's weak against ice, which fire is strong against, so fire does have that bonus going for it. Alright, let's knock out this Sentret real quick, like. Should be... Ooh, just barely. 
go, go, Quilava. Slack off is down. Yeah, you can see that recoil is doing a chunk of our health. We've, we've lost 20 health, basically, mostly to recoil. I think we took a hit from the sentry. I'm not entirely sure about that. You used Thief? You cretin. Let's smoke screen it. Just so I save the power, or just so I save the damage in case uh, Quilava would have went first. And there we go, center it down. Give me just a second here, I need to tab off the page to check something. Uh, let's see. Where is my thingamabob for the thread? Speaking of which, I usually uh, I usually mention this at the beginning. Um, those of you guys that are in the cav, if you want to be named after a Pokemon, please um, check the forums uh, in the description below. There will be uh, a thing for it down there. Aha! I just saw it. There we go. I gotta pull up my list here because we're actually gonna come up on some Pokemon that are named that we're gonna catch here shortly. There we go. Okay. Let me pull up the game again. Alright. Chaser Calda eliminated. You're just like us. It's easy to see. Well, yeah, I'm part of like one of the. Or I was part of like the top rated, uh, what you want to call it, the shenanigans place. So we got the Pirate Super Hotel here. They don't have a Pokemon Center, so you have to pay. Well, they do have a Pokemon Center. It's just an, uh, across the bridge in the area we're going to be going to shortly. So pay $100 there just to uh, rest up my Pokemon, make sure they're all fighting fit. And we didn't check out this building over here in the corner, so we'll do that now. Jeez, look at this big dude. The name's Duking. He runs the Coliseum here. You want to enter a battle? Go see the Coliseum's receptionist. Okay. Mr. Duking is busy. No one is supposed to get, what, to the bookshelf? Nothing special to the bookshelf. Oh, look, a button. <laughs> they couldn't make that more obvious. Oh, look at these little kids. This is Marcia. Okay. They're busy. Okay. Visit and play another time. What you got, kid? Snag them from those criminals. Hey, speaking of snagging, I'm pretty good at that. Not really. We'll see. Who this fool? How much more are you going to take from Mir B and his stooges? You're using him in the Coliseum, okay. They suck the spirit right out of you? Okay, jeez. Man, I... Wow. I've lost faith in you. Wow. Okay. A little bit of disrespectfulness going on there. His face looked all scary. Yo, big guy, what was that about? Sorry, I'm busy. You'll have to excuse me. Really, my dude? Really? All right. You, you keep looking at me. What, what's wrong with you? You're quite the hottie. Don't piss off. Get oh! She just called Garish a wall. She just called Garish a wallflower. Oh boy. Garish is very upset. <laughs> Not to my taste. Garish wants me to be a man and stomp this hoe down. Be gone, thought! Alright, looks like Garish and I are on Thought Patrol here. Uh, Chaser Emok has a Gulpin and a Zubat. We'll go ahead, we'll clean them up real quick like. Quilava and Espeon taken to the field here. They'll. They'll easily clean up both these Pokemon. So, 
Uh, both of these are poison type Pokemon, Zubat being a poison flying type. Uh, Espeon's gonna make short work out of both of them. Uh, I'm gonna target the Zubat just because it can be a little more of an annoyance. Oops. If I can push the right buttons here, that is. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Super effectiveness. Alright, Espeon's gonna gain some levels. We're gonna Shadow Rush up with Quilava there. And nice chunk of damage there, I like it. So yeah, there's a flying type move, Gust. It's gonna hit Quilava there. Yeah, did about 10-ish damage. No, almost... Yeah, 10-ish damage or so, 11, something like that. Yeah, we should be alright. And there we go, super effective, a Zubat down. And uh, this thought is, bye bye. Of course I got all serious. You meant you you called Garish a wallflower. What am I supposed to do? Just it's funny. I'll get I'll give her that. It's funny, but we gotta slap around thoughts and put them in their place. Okay, that's what Garish and I do. Battles of Frail Girl without easing up. Uh, I don't, I don't really care. It's me and Garish all the way here. Jeez, what? She, she like keep following me, and now Garish is triggered again. Here in the square that I saw the strange shadow Pokemon. They tried to leave town, and that's when the goons grabbed her. Okay. All right. So this right here is called Battle Circle or something like that. Um. All of these guys have shadow Pokemon on them. It's it's gonna be interesting. I I want to look at who has what because I want to make sure I grab the right Pokemon first. Uh oh wow I forgot the story pages are like three pages long. All right. Mr. Dover, where's he at? I think this is I think it's this guy on my right. What do you got, fool? I should have healed first. Oh well, we'll deal with it. Nope, this is Ryder Vant. Alright. Mr. Vant. I didn't throw up a um overlay for uh what you wanna call it, the other two hooligans that we captured. I'm going to be doing it from now on for all Shadow Pokemon we catch. Just the first two are kind of trial-ish Pokemon. But from now on, we'll be uh, we'll be going over all the Shadow Pokemon. So, speaking of, Mischievous uh, is our first Shadow Pokemon we will be dealing with here. It's a uh, Ghost-type Pokemon. Let me flip on over to my decks here. I should have had this prepared beforehand. Uh, I was not really thinking about how I was going to go about this. So, Mitch Mischievous... Uh, level 30 to start with. Very, very good in its speed, actually, surprisingly. Um, it's the one of the only ghost type, I think the only ghost type you get out of all of Colosseum. So it's a very, very effective Pokemon, especially because ghost type has some immunities to fighting and normal types. And there are quite a few normal types and normal type moves you'll be dealing with. It also has levitate, making it immune to ground types. So that's three types it's immune to. And, um, there are certain ground. There's a certain ground type move called Earthquake that is very, very effective in this game because it will hit all Pokemon on the field. Uh, so I think we want to capture this. We're gonna, obviously we're going to capture the Mischievous, but uh, I really, I really want to put this Mischievous on the team. Um, leveling up, it gets it gets Pain Split, Parasong, and Grudge, which are some very caveat unique moves that can be very very effective if used correctly especially in the types of battles we'll be doing so I think we're gonna try to capture it off the rip here just get it off the field and get it on my team uh, I'm gonna burn through my pokeballs first actually it should let's see it's level 30 it'll be it should be able to uh, I'm gonna smoke screen it actually can I smoke screen it I cannot because uh, smoke screens normal Let's see if I can Shadow Rush it here. Um, now, Ghost is super effective on Sidekick, 
So we want to make sure that Espeon does not get uh, too banged up in this one here. Because it does have Shadow Ball, and Shadow Ball is a very, very heavily damaging move. Ooh, and there it is. Oh boy, we need to get Espeon out of there now. Tickle? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I thought it was going to use something so much more threatening. Whew! Okay. Alright, Espeon. We need you... We need to call Quilava. I need to get Espeon off the field right now. <laughs> I do not want to lose my Espeon this quickly. But yeah, as you can tell, this game is... is intense. It's very difficult. <laughs> That's what I meant by this, the game being very difficult and it's scaling. Okay, so it's going to Shadow Ball... Umbreon, there we go. That's what we needed. Um, Dark resists Ghost and is super effective against it, so that's going to really help us out here. What's this skitty doing? They're just going to focus down Umbreon? I'm perfectly fine with that. Do what you need to do, Ombre. Um, we're going to use Quilava's turn to... Oh, wait, no, that's right, I haven't damaged it yet. I need to damage this Mischievous. I don't want to do too much damage to it. So we'll Shadow Rush it here. And then I'll get rid of that Skitty real quick. There's going to be one more Pokemon. Oh, Skitty's a normal type Pokemon, by the way. Uh, it's not... Nothing special about it. It's... That's it. It's very, very... Um, what's the term? Very obnoxious in the fact that it uses a move called Attract a lot. And what Attract does is it'll give you a percentile of whether or not you're actually going to use your turn that turn, or if you're just going to uh, stare at it in amazement. But it's off the field now, we don't have to worry about that. We put some damage on uh, what's-its-face, however, Quilava is currently confused. So it is going to be a bit of a challenge. Hmm. I think now I'm going to just... I'm I'm playing it really cautious, I know, but I like I said, with the limitations we put on us of not being able to use items, I need to play it cautious. Because I can't heal my... Uh, so in normal games, what I normally do is I would heal my Espeon and I would send it back out there and switch between Espeon and Umbreon as we went. I don't have that luxury because I can't heal Espeon in the back because I can't use healing items during battle. But we got the Mischievous, little damage done to it, so I could send it out right away if I wanted to, open up that gauge on its heart a little bit more, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap out uh, Quilava. Because Quilava is confused, and I don't want him taking more... Actually, you know what? I need to use his moves, uh, so I will use him. And then I'm going to swap out Umbreon for Mischievous, so we can take a look at Mischievous here. Mischievous is going to be very, very effective on the team. Um, it doesn't have any evolutions at all, but it is very, very useful. So it looks like Quilava is going to get the attack off there, and take out the Zigzagoon. Good work, my boy. Good work. Oh, Zigzagoon down. Look at him. He's so cute. And that's Rider Vant down. We stole his Mischievous. We're good. So I think we're going to heal up here. Um, I'm going to take us over, venture over to the Coliseum, and we'll see what's going on over there. All right. If Pokemon goes into hyper mode, call its name and its head will snap back into reality. Uh, this town's hiding a big secret. I wonder why. It's like the biggest criminal organization around. <laughs> I wonder why. So we're crossing the bridge here. Um, we're going to go over to the Coliseum that Duke King owns. The crevi this crevice runs deep under the ground. You can't even see the bottom from here. Pirates and old mining. Th That's it. That's all you're gonna say. <laughs> you see, pirates and old mining town, and he just stops talking. Okay. All right. So this right here is the pirate coliseum. It's a heap of junk, I know, but uh, very, very useful. Let's heal up. Espeon needs some love there, and we'll take a closer look at our mischievous. Obviously, there's not a whole lot to look at, but it's in the party now. It has a spell tag on it, which will boost its uh, ghost-type moves, I believe. 
But yeah, there you see it has levitate, so it's not going to be hit by any sort of ground attack moves. It's not going to be hit by any fighting type moves. It's not going to be hit by any normal type moves unless they use a move called Odor Sleuth or Lock On or something like that, which will allow them to hit for normal damage, I believe. Not 100% on that. <clears throat> so, um, its stats aren't too pretty. It's got really good special defense, really good special attack, really good speed. However, and this is a really big however, and it's a very unfortunate however. Ghost is... let me take a look just to confirm. Ghost is a physical attacking move. So you see that attack stat there? <laughs> 36? Yes. That is a very, very bad news for us. So we're going to have to put special attacking moves on this. Unfortunately, we'll not get a same type of attack bonus. Due to its attack being so abysmal anyways, it's not really going to affect much. But I have ideas for Mischievous that I can do. Um, looking at its level up moves and looking at what it can learn by TM, which are technical machines. It's basically supplementary moves you can teach your Pokemon that they don't, they don't learn by level up. Uh, we should be able to do some good shenanigans there. Because uh, we'll learn quite a few really good moves. Uh, if any of you would like to be named after this Mischievous... There is a link in the description for the th thread on the 7th Cavalry website. You'll have to be a 7th Cavalry member to access the thread. Uh, highly recommend joining the CAV. We do lots of very fun stuff. I, have, I should have an ARMA video coming up uh, later today or tomorrow as well. Um, kind of demonstrating some stuff that we do. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other ARMA videos, please take a look. Do, we do a lot of stuff in the CAV. It's, it's a lot of fun. A lot of really good people there. Uh, aside from that, um, I'm going to end the video here. We had a ton of other Shadow Pokemon we're going to be capturing in the next episode. So I want to make sure we give it a lot of time to allow people to pick some names beforehand that we'll be able to get. Uh, either way, Panda, check in out.